So a quick summary of what actually glaucoma is. See, glaucoma has tried of three things. Raised intraocular pressure, and intraocular pressure means it has to be more than 21 millimeters of mercury. Second is optic nerve damage, because this raised intraocular pressure causes compression of the optic nerve. And third, this leads to damage of the neurons, which leads to visual field effects. Okay, So these are the three things. This is an interesting graphic which you see here, where the pressure is shown rising up, damaging the optic nerve, and leading to a loss of visual fields. Okay, Now, remember that we don't need all three to make a diagnosis of glaucoma. Just two are enough, any two in fact. Okay, So you may have a normal pressure. Let's say I said it has to be more than 21, but it could be around 15. And yet, if you have optic nerve damage and visual field effects, We'll call it glaucoma. This is so called as this is normal tension. This glaucoma? is normal tension. Oh, Absolutely okay. is right, Dr. <coughs> Govin. This is called normal tension glaucoma. See, the diagnosis is we need two out of three. Only one is not glaucoma. For instance, let us assume that the pressure is 55, very, very high. But the optic nerve is da not uh, damaged and the visual fields are normal. Then this is not glaucoma. Despite the pressure being so high, we call this as ocular hypertension, OHT. Okay. Now this may convert to glaucoma or it may not convert to glaucoma. But right now, it is not wrong. Okay, so this is the definition. We need two out of three, and then what are the predisposing conditions of glaucoma? We should know that amongst our friends, our relatives, who of them are going to develop glaucoma. The first one is the race. The Afro-Americans, the colored races, particularly have a lot of glaucoma. Okay, particularly those with dark skin in Africa, in Afro-Americans, they have a very high predisposition. Glaucoma. Indians, for instance, we do have glaucoma, but it is mostly normal tension glaucoma. Thin corneas. Please remember, thin corneas, the CCT stands for central corneal thickness. Most of you are aware that normal thickness is between 50, 500 to beg your pardon, 500 to 600 microns. So if you have a cornea thinner than 555 microns, okay, very nice figure. Triple five microns, if you have thinner than that, then you are maybe uh, having glaucoma later on. That's one of the risk factors. Age is important, middle aged, ab above <coughs> 50 years of age, which means that Dr. Govind and I cannot fall in this category. <laughs> we are far younger. So, those of you who are more than 50. Sir, hmm? this is chronologically, it's not yes. mental age. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is chronologically, absolutely. So, those of you are above 50, okay, and many of you are above 50, at least your behavior tells me that, <laughs> you will have a danger of glaucoma. Myopic. Now, myopics are also predisposed to glaucoma and usually those about minus 3 and beyond. Okay, It's called moderate myopia. They have been seen to develop glaucoma. One more risk factor. Cardiovascular disease also is an important factor predisposed to glaucoma. They are some of the most important ones. They are not all of them. And now you've diagnosed glaucoma. What is the management? Management, we have the only beneficial approach. In fact, the only thing that reduces that works in glaucoma is to reduce the intraocular pressure. Okay, there are other means of like neuroprotection and ocular blood flow concepts, but these are mostly experimental and have not proven to be always correct. So, only thing, the only modifiable risk factor in glaucoma is to lower the intraocular pressure. Okay, and <clears throat> so therefore, we have this concept called the target pressure. The target pressure. This is the holy grail of glaucoma specialists, and Target pressure is the upper limit of intraocular pressure estimated to prevent progression of visual field loss. Okay? Now, this is just an estimation and it depends on patient to patient. It is not fixed. It is individualized for every patient. So, we fix whenever a patient glaucoma comes to us, we tell him that this is the intraocular pressure, this is our target. And if he exceeds that, then you will have dangerous problems later on. And this is very, very, uh, has multiple risk factors. But the rule of thumb, if you want to know, is this, that for severe glaucoma, we aim the pressure to be less than 10 to 12 millimeters of mercury. For moderate glaucoma, it's about 12 to 15 millimeters of mercury. And for mild glaucoma, it's around 15 to 70. So just remember, mid-teens, we call it the mid-teens, okay, like age. So the mid-teens, we came to remember, we don't want it to go above 21. But the mid-teens is a good idea for aim for raising intraocular pressure to get down to mid teens. So how do we lower intraocular pressure? And here the most important strategy are the anti-glaucoma drugs. Anti-glaucoma drugs, remember, will lower intraocular pressure. And here you must know one thing, that aqueous outflow, 80% of the aqueous flows out to the trabecular meshwork pathway in a normal patient, and around 20% goes out through the uveoscleral pathway. And this is the basic strategy of lowering intraocular. With these words, I hand you over to my friend and colleague, Dr. Govind Raigar, 
we will talk about the most common and important drugs for lowering intraocular pressure in glaucoma. Over to you, Dr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shaswath. So, Dr. Shaswath has beautifully explained how the patient presents with glaucoma and what are our aims in glaucoma. So, I will be talking about the drugs. So, basically, the drugs, they will be aim to lower the intraocular pressure. But first of all, we need to know why intraocular pressure is high. Only then we can decrease that. So, the reason of increase in intraocular pressure is there is more amount of aqueous humor. And aqueous humor, if it is more, pressure increases. So, if we decrease aqueous humor, pressure will decrease. So, what are the basic methods by which we can decrease aqueous humor? One, we can decrease the formation of aqueous humor or we can say secretion of aqueous humor. And second, we can increase the outflow of aqueous humor. So, aqueous humor which has been formed, we can drain that or we can decrease the formation. Okay? Now, outflow, if you see, sir has already told, we have two major pathways by which it can be drained. One is the main drain through which it is going out, which is called as trabecular outflow. This major nali hai, iske through drain hota hai. Okay? But second is used in emergency. Normally, it is not used that much, around 20% goes, which is called as UVO scleral outflow. So, two major outflows. So, how to decrease the intraocular pressure is either decrease the formation of aqueous humor or increase the drainage of aqueous humor. So, two main strategies we discussed. One, decrease formation. Second, decrease, increase the outflow. The drugs decreasing the formation. First of all, from where the aqueous humor forms? Aqueous humor is filtered from the blood. The blood vessels which are coming in the eye, they filter and they will form the aqueous humor. So, if less blood come in the eye, less will be filtered. So basically, any drug which is causing vasoconstriction ciliary, of the ciliary blood vessels, they will decrease the formation. And if you know pharmacology, we have two major receptors. One is alpha, second is beta. Alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction and beta 2 causes vasodilation. So if we want to cause vasoconstriction, that means decrease the blood flow, we can give alpha agonist or we can give beta blockers. These are the two main pathways. Alpha agonist drugs like dipivaphrin. Apraclonidin like drugs and Bremonidin. These are the three main drugs. Whereas beta blockers, any drug ending with the lol, like timolol, bitoxolol, these are beta blockers. So they will act by decreasing the formation of aqueous humor. And most important, MCQs which are asked in the anti glaucoma drugs is about their adverse effects. If you see dipivaphrine, it is a pro-drug of epinephrine or adrenaline. The most important adverse effect of epinephrine is it can cause black pigmentation in the conjunctiva. So what happens basically when adrenaline is added in the eye, it gets oxidized by the air. And when it gets oxidized, it forms a compound called adrenochrome, which is black colored pigment. So that is important to remember. It is pigmentation of conjunctiva, not iris, conjunctiva. Okay, then aparaclonidin, if you see, the major adverse effect is it causes lid retraction. The main side effect of aparaclonidin is lid retraction. From the name you can find it contains in the name LID, lid. Lid is present in the name, so it causes lid retraction. Bremonidin is avoided in the young patients, particularly less than 2 years babies, because it causes brain suppression. It causes apnea in the newborn babies. So the name says BR means brain suppression. It causes brain suppression. Clear? And beta blockers, they mainly have systemic adverse effects. Particularly, they can cause bronchoconstriction. So, they are avoided in asthmatic patients. Okay? So, these are the drugs which decrease formation of aqueous humor. 